So over the last weekend there, I was in Birmingham, away with the boys for EGX 2016. I told myself I would record the trip and make one of those video logs for you, but I fucked it. Left the house at 6 o'clock in the morning and forgot to record a single thing. No intro or nothing. Fucked it. I still tried to record some things, but to be honest I spent all four days pished. It was so bad that on the night that we took it easy, I still ended up drinking a full fucking crate. And for that reason, everything I recorded just seems to be all over the shop. It was like that scene for The Hangover, waking up every morning to check my phone to see what I'd been filming the night before when I was pissed. Alright, we we'll look at it once. And then we delete them. It's gonna be okay. Walking through Birmingham High Street at 3 o'clock in the morning singing Scottish football songs and being all round general bobags. So instead of deciding to make a video log, I decided to add all the clips to the end of this video. For anybody who wants to see what drunken idiots we were in Birmingham. In the meantime though, I want to talk to you about some of the stupidity that surrounded the event. Leaving on a jet plane, I don't know where I'll be. So as you know the event was in Birmingham, that means we had to travel 400 miles to get there. And the cheapest way probably would have been a mega bus, but fuck sitting in a steel box full of farts for 9 hours. We also noticed it would be cheaper to fly than take the train, plus it would be much quicker. So we decided to fly. Now I haven't flown in 10 years, and I'm not gonna lie, I've never really been too keen on the idea of flying. I've never really wanted to go anywhere that much that I'm prepared to be propelled towards it at 300 miles per hour in a tin can with wings. So the only option was a wee pint for nerves before we flew. But the flight was at 8 o'clock in the morning. That meant we were getting fired into a pint in the pub at the back of 7 in the morning. <laughs> Airports are the only place that is socially acceptable to get pissed at that time of the morning. I mean, could you imagine walking into your local at 6am and asking for the usual? Fucking barman's probably still in his bed. Also on a totally unrelated note, I've decided that I'm going to be flying much more often. The other thing about airports is security. Security is both a good and bad thing. I mean, they stop folk trying to take bombs onto a plane. Because you know, the 8.30am for Glasgow to Birmingham is right up there on the ISIS hit list. The issue I have with security is the massive lack of trust that they have for you. I mean, I had a bottle opener attached to my keys. And on the way back through security in Birmingham, the lassie stopped me and told me that I wasn't allowed to take a spanner onto the plane. I mean, I explained to her it was just a wee bottle opener on a keyring, but she's still like, I'm sorry sir, but we're gonna have to do a full bag search. Now, I wouldn't have had an issue with that if anybody had said anything on the way there, but nae cunt said a word at Glasgow Airport. And of course, flying back for a four day trip, you're gonna have a bag fully washing. So there she is getting fired into my bag. Rip all your manky socks and fucking Y fronts out on the table for everyone to see. It's not just that, folks see your bag getting searched and suddenly assume you're a criminal. It's just a misunderstanding, she thinks I've got a spanner in my... in my bag. Anyway, the lassie eventually found the keyring and kept calling it a spanner. Even after looking right at it and me telling her about 15 times that it was a keyring. Okay sir, I'm just gonna have to check to make sure that you're allowed to take your spanner onto the plane. I mean, there's just no need for that. That's shocking to call wee Marley a spanner. And there shouldn't be any restrictions that didn't allow him on a plane. Eventually, after the whole rigmarole of checking for drugs and being an all-round cheeky bitch, she went, right, that's fine, you can take your spanner with you. You're free to repack your bags now. Oh aye, cheers hen. You've just ripped out the entire contents of my bag, including four days of washing and chucked them about whilst you searched them for every cunt to see. Now, I've got to put it all back in the bag for you. I thought about causing a scene, you know, being pure sarcastic as fuck. But you know what airport security are like. Even so much as a dodgy look and that'll be you fucked on the no-fly list. And then that'll be me trying to find a mega bus at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night back to fucking Glasgow. So I just repacked the bags and gave her the fingers when she wasn't looking before I walked away. So while we were down there, we stayed in a wee hotel next to the Birmingham New Street Station. I'm gonna level with you right now. It was a fucking shite hole. The room itself was like a fucking time capsule of the 1970s. I was amazed it even had a TV. And some comedian had hung up one of the modern pictures on the wall. Trying to kid on the room was one of the art decor contemporary modern fucking things. It was basically just a big fuck you to anyone that stayed there. The room was single glazed as well, which meant you could hear folks singing and playing musical instruments at all sorts of fucked up hours of the morning. One morning it was even a cunt that was beatboxing. He's lucky I was too rough to move or I'd have been gone doing his face would have been getting fucking boxed. 
Also, all the plug sockets in the wall were turned off at night except the one that was used to plug in the table lamp. And there wasn't any light in the ceiling, just one shitey wee table lamp. That meant at night time you had to choose between the sense of sight or having a fucking phone. And that's on top of the toilet not even flushing either. It was true fucking banter. Glad we never spent very long in there. We always went back to the other boys' rooms because they had a bigger room anyway, which was probably not the best idea. Because come check out on Sunday morning, we'd all been pissed the night before. Drink had been scaled over all the beds. Strongbow dark fruits, so it was fucking deep purple. Somebody kicked a can of Foster's oil the flare as well. And we left a literal sea of empty cans oil the flare. You had to swim through them to get to the fucking door. Bathrooms were actual fucking write-offs. Pretty sure you could have set off a bomb and seen a notable improvement. Shame they wouldn't have let us bring it up on the plane, no way. Look at this photograph Every time I do it makes me laugh so as some of you may have heard, on the Saturday night myself and my associates ended up going out to a Warframe party. It was a night of free drinks and as anyone with an ounce of common sense knows, didn't invite Scottish folk to a free bar. Well, as you can imagine, we took full advantage. Marley even got the guy behind the bar to start making venoms. They spread like wildfire and before you knew it, even half the English were all drinking double venoms. Of course the devs at Warframe had put on a pretty decent night. But one of the questionable decisions they made was to use one of those pop-up Polaroid photo booths that print out images there and then. You know, the ones that let you add custom text and have a couple of pictures with the lads. These photo booths are designed for maybe two to three people. We squeezed in seven. Seven extremely drunk people, more to the point, as you can see from this quite innocent lads on tour picture. Notice how this guy here, my brother, is standing in the back, necking what I can only assume was about his 20th double vodka. Now these booths don't just take one picture, they take four. So as we take a wee look through these pictures, we can see the events leading up to what I can only describe to be as a total shit show. Notice how in this picture my brother is no longer visible. And then in the final one, all hell has broken loose. At this point, my brother's fallen through the back of the photo booth, bursting the back of it. Not only that, but he's grabbed mine and Marley's t-shirts and tried to drag us with him. I've fallen out the side of the booth there, and Marley's given Silent Core a wee bit of a right hand belter. Of course, after this incident, we decided it wasn't quite time to leave yet, so when the DJ stopped playing the music, we all started jumping around steaming, chanting, One more tune! One more tune! One more tune! One more tune! That and, Here we! Here we! Here we fucking go! Even when there wasn't any music. It was around this time they started trying to close the free bar and clear the place. It was too fucking late by this point. Place was a fucking right off. Anyway, if you want to hear some of the stories about what happened in the nightclubs when we went to EGX, including things like meeting Tom Syndicate, make sure to go and check out Marley 13s video, which is linked in the description. Now, before I end this video, as promised, I want to share with you some of the video clips of what we got up to when we were at Birmingham in EGX. All right, we we'll look at it once, and then we delete them. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> the lips I tasted like. Those cigarettes staring at the moon. We'd go to bed in my arms. You're safe and sound without a threat. And I can't wait to see what happens next. How far can we get if we sail? Isn't this the cutest little ass you've ever seen? Stop. Look at this little butt. Don't make me make myself conscious. Marley, Mar Marley 13 butt. <laughs> you still filming that fish? Get that, get that fucking camera. Here we, here we, here we fucking go. Here we. Here we fucking go! Here we fucking go! 
No one loves you, get that fucking camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucked up. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Chris. Warframe, more like fucking door frame, mate. Fuck off. <laughs> Got it. Get shit for Harambe. But the door is shit, so I just. What? I didn't get to sleep. Your dad sells Ava. <laughs> <laughs>